The Fire Within Podcast. You need a sustainable plan, the right mindset, and the knowledge and inspiration to stoke the fire within. Just like the Phoenix, you can burn your old habits, never turn back, and emerge completely anew. There are no shortcuts. Welcome, Fire Within Community. Welcome, Fire Within Community. This is the Fire Within Podcast, where we talk about all things health, fitness, and nutrition related. I'm your host, Brandon, with my co-host, Joe. Hello. How you doing, Brandon? Great. We, we, have, we just got done working out. We came right over from the gym. We're here. We're sipping coffee. It's morning-ish time. And everything hurts and I'm dying. Everything <laughs> hurts. So we just did an episode not too long ago about Mike Menser. And candidly, like, I don't think either of us knew much about him other than just the general things people know about Mike Menser. Yeah, and I listened to his audio recordings. So you knew uh, more than me. Yeah. And so we did, the, we did the show on him and I found it interesting. And then Saturday a week ago or two weeks ago, I was like, I'm going to, I was bored. So I just went down the YouTube rabbit trail and I watched like maybe four hours of Mike Menser videos. Now this is after we'd done about three to four weeks of a two day split yeah. that he'd put out. And then you find these videos that are even more intense. Which is kind of like, they're more intense. Yes. Completely agree. The workouts are terrible and we'll get into that a little bit more. But it seemed like from what I saw in the videos, this is where Mike Menser wanted people to start. Yeah. Like these are, so it's four workouts, four days in between. Four times. Yeah. Which to me is mind boggling because now I really like the gym. I love the gym. Right. I don't like to not work out a day. <laughs> so this only workout once every four days thing is not sitting well with me. But, but it is it is like a and that's it matches up with what he said. He's the science behind what he's saying, like you even said, it makes sense. Yeah, because you're it's just tearing, a long freaking time. Yeah, you're tearing down muscle in the gym. Now, if you remember, if you haven't caught the other episode, let's just catch you up on a couple of Menser principles. Yeah. You want to train as few reps as possible, oh, and, and as yeah. intensely just, as possible. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I did. <laughs> I was going to say, like, it helps to get a visual. Mike Menser's, like, in the Arnold Schwarzenegger Gold Gym 1980s, like, ripped, like, crazy big dude. Yeah. And so, like, you need to know that so you know that he doesn't sound like he's not building any muscle and he doesn't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, he absolutely knows what he's talking about. And the caveat to the, any of these Mike Menser episodes, I don't think this is the best place for a beginner to start. Sure. I was extremely skeptical going into it. My biggest concern being injury risk Yeah. because of the intensity. And we did some stuff wrong, which we'll get into, that yeah. might have increased our likelihood of hurting <laughs> ourselves because we didn't um, really know. We yeah. were just like, okay. Well, for, for instance, we're the, one of the machines recommended is leg extension. Yeah. And, uh, we did that today. We did that ago. today. And I've, I've never put a, a client on a leg extension unless it was very lightweight for rehab purposes because there is a high propensity of aggravating patella tendon because of the amount of force. And part of it is setting it up right. And my first set, I was feeling quite a bit of knee pain. So we'd adjusted the seat some and got more of the hamstring off of the bench so it moved the fulcrum a little bit. And that took a little bit of it off. I'm still a little skeptical about the safety of it, but but damn, it gets you it gets your quad, man. It was the first time I ever finished a set where I jelly legged after. Mm -hmm. Where it's like I tried to get up and it felt like my muscles were atrophied. Like, yep. My exact quote quote was it's a good thing I'm holding the squat machine up. <laughs> it was rough. And it was a superset, so we had to get right over into the next exercise yeah. right after that. Now, our previous Mike Menser split we were doing was uh, a two-day split, an A day and a B day. And it was like six or seven exercises. I think the pull day was actually nine exercises. Mm -hmm. And it was two sets. This is one set. One set per which muscle Which is nuts. Group, which is nuts. Because you feel like you should keep working out. Yeah. No, I didn't. I was, I was done, Joe. No, I mean, <laughs> I guess I know what you of, mean. Like, so in terms of this is what I, I was trying to get at. I feel like I felt like I didn't do enough. Like there wasn't enough volume. Like I felt like I was cheating myself or doing a lazy workout. Now, I don't mean that I didn't feel it. I feel like I did a full workout. Oh, yeah. No, my, my legs are done. They're toast. But um, it's tough to stop mentally, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. When you're used to a significant more volume. So like, yeah. so today's workout, for example, it was a super set of eight to 15 reps of leg extensions and then leg presses. One set. One set. One set. But Mike Menser style. Mike Menser style, which we didn't know. And I told Brandon, this was weird. And I, I watched a bunch of videos. And then I also went to Barnes & Noble and found his book. Mm -hmm. Right? And so there was a paragraph in the book that it just doesn't get mentioned in a lot of places, which I thought was weird. The but tempo. It was like, the tempo is four, two, four. Yep. So like in the, in, so it's, Four counts on the concentric, the hard, you know, lifting right. portion. And then hold or press or squeeze two, for two. Two Mississippi, Mississippi, mind you. Yeah. In full contraction. 
and then four Mississippi on the way down. Right. So now you might be starting to realize, oh, that would hurt. Yeah, that's a 10-second <laughs> rep, one rep, which means if you do six reps, it takes an entire minute. If you're doing 12 to 20 reps. It I feels mean, like a lot. It's a two minutes. It's two minutes of solid under tension. So if you're a big time under tension person, you might just be like, oh, okay, that's different. Rather than just busting out one regular tempo quick set to try to yeah, get it done. Because typically it's more like two, one, three is what most people start with and what, mm -hmm. what a general approach is. And most people in the gym cheat that. So it's more like one, one, one. Right. So um, that's tempo. That's super important. The other thing that we, we didn't do the first time we did it, but we found out the second time was we should be waiting 15 seconds and trying to squeeze out four more. Right. Now, this is when we're doing the two-day split. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. The old stuff that we completed four weeks of. And, and, and so, then in addition to that, to finish the set, mm -hmm. then if you have somebody you're working out with, you get a cheat rep and then you, you just do the, the downward side of the, the yeah. exercise and no, try the, to the eccentric, the negative rep. And you're still so looking for that four, two, four or in the eccentric, decentric, sorry. You still want four counts you still of eccentric. Four counts. Yeah. So if we're curling, for example, like Brandon will help get the bar up and then I try to get four down and then. Yeah. Then when you can't possibly do it, like when the bar just goes in one second and you got nothing left, you've That's, done a set. Now you've done a Mike Menser set. Right. So it's not, so, it's not like, and that's what, there's a lot to understand about it. So I get why people are so confused about one set, eight to 15. Okay. Right. But it's probably three times the amount of time under tension is doing, you know, three or four sets in right. the eight to 12 range. And, you know, if you watch his videos, he's big on no junk sets. So yeah. no junk reps, no junk, no sets. junk sets. No, like, yep. so like when you're doing like a 12 to 15, a lot of us, right. The first five or six, we, we probably aren't really feeling much, especially if we're doing like a regular like one up hold, one down hold, like just kind of busting yeah. it out. And he's like, what a waste of time. Don't do that. Yeah. And then the other thing that we weren't doing is we weren't warming up. Yep. So there should be one to two warm up sets, if not three or four, to get you close to your, your max weight for the working set. Yeah. And I think if you put all those together, yeah. it's kind of like, oh, I get it. One set does make sense. So one working set. One working set. Yes. Yeah. But you're not warming up for every exercise, sure. uh, just whatever the compound movement is. So um, in, in the case of a Mike Menser workout, it's the second one in any superset is mm -hmm. what you warm up with. Right. So we only did three total exercises today. Right. We did leg extension, we did the leg press, and we did standing calf raises. That was it. Yeah. So we did a couple warm-up sets to lock in the weight on the leg press. Then we started our working set on leg extension. So it was eight, was eight to 15 rep range, mm -hmm. four to four. Rest 15 seconds, crank out four to six more, and then do your uh, assisted eccentrics. And then you immediately go to the leg press, repeat the process. And then you rest the appropriate amount of time. To make funny sounds and jello leg. And then it was on to standing calf raises. Yep. And that's not a compound movement. There's no warm up for that. They're, they're already pretty fired up from the squats, or excuse me, the leg press. Yeah. And you just do one set And again, four, two, four, which is a lot different than the way I normally do calf races, which is like as fast as possible trying to feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, total working time, probably 15 to 20 minutes with five to seven minutes of crying like a bitch. <laughs> so, which there was a lot of that. The, the machines that we did were like two machines apart from each other. And it was funny because Brandon's going, Hurr. and I'm on the other side. Going, <laughs> It's not a pretty workout. <laughs> no, it's not. Because it's not um, easy to finish them, especially when you're trying to get toward the last two or three. Like, you, you fight it. Yeah. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't four on the way up. Like, yeah. it took longer than yeah. four to get to where I needed to get. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now I want to go back and talk about the first split we did. I was shocked and amazed and baffled at the change I saw in my physique right. in, in four weeks. Insane. Uh, I've been doing this shit a long time, Joe. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and nothing has gotten gotten me that quick. Right. Of, of a Especially I noticed it in the chest area. Like, I yeah. feel like I do chest a lot. Yeah. Or the regular amount, I suppose. A lot's probably the wrong mm -hmm. qualifier. But it, my chest doesn't change much. But we did like two or three of these Mike Menser style things. And yeah. it's like, oh, wow. I got chesticles. I really feel like it's making a difference. Yeah. So... Now, of course, um, it's not a huge difference, right? It's a couple workouts, but. Yeah. But as far as time spent to what I get in return, it's wild. I, I struggle mentally with the concept because I am somebody that truly loves, enjoys, right. needs the gym for stress relief. So what I've been doing is I've been hammering the fuck out of my core on the days in between, which has been really fun. And what I found out is I've been cheating my core 
by doing, you know, being pre-fatigued from all these other workouts. By the time I got to core, I was only probably putting in 60% of the effort I'm doing when I just focus on it by myself. So I've been, and I've been applying Mike Menser techniques to, to the core, like hanging leg raises, 424. Oh my God. We it's, did, we did inclined uh, sit-ups. Sit -ups. Yeah. Today. Um, pretty, pretty nuts. You added weight. I did not. Yep. That's a good time. <laughs> so now I treat and have always treated the core a little bit different than the other muscle groups, They're more endurance based muscles. They don't grow super lot like your rectus abdominis muscles in the front, maybe a quarter inch. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to hypertrophy like your quads, your biceps and your chest are going to do. So I'm wondering if the principles apply the same or not the same. And I just enjoy doing it. Mm. If you're doing the regular workouts and skipping core and you've got deadlifts and squats included, you're going to have a ripped core. So it's not necessary to do ab exercises if you're doing enough weight and proper form on those other things to develop your core. But for me, it's just fun. I enjoy it because I'm weird. Fun's not the word I would use for core. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> a little bit different. Um, so anyway, that's the one Maybe thing. Maybe I would I'm have doing. more fun if I had core muscles, I feel like. There you go. <laughs> well, I think, I think you got some. Otherwise, you just kind of flop over. But yeah. <laughs> it's maybe more visible. So anyway, that's the one thing I'm deviating from. But And I did see one video and, you know, just. Again, we have a disclaimer and maybe we'll play it. This isn't medical advice. And, and I think we talked about this on the first Mike Menser thing. This probably isn't a workout that's best if your goal is living a long time and optimize health and longevity and flexibility. And this is to build muscle seems to be the point. Right. The views and opinions expressed on this show are not meant to be used as medical advice. Consult your doctor before implementing any health or exercise changes. The Fire Within encourages you to do your own research and aims to spark interest and motivation to a healthier lifestyle. Hey, Fire Within Nation. Has this ever happened to you? You go online to find a quick recipe for mashed potatoes, but first you have to hear about Grandfather's Farm in 1929. When I was a boy. <laughs> the first time you had a potato, and like six and a half chapters later, you get to the ingredient list. Tasted like dirt. Drives me nuts. So me and Joe have worked to solve that issue for you. If you head to firewithinnf.com and check out the recipe section, healthy recipes, following the Fire Within way. And it's just the recipe, no blog, you're welcome. You'll find recipes like steak chimichurri. There's a bananas foster smoothie recipe. There's a sourdough French toast. Lots of healthy things. Make your own ranch dip and, and tons more. So head to firewithinnf.com. Check out the recipe section and enjoy. And like uh, you'd mentioned in one of Menser's video, he said, you know, I'm not saying that this is going to create the best version of yourself or the highest quality of life, but by God, it's going to build some damn muscle. And I think that's important to realize that's when we're saying, yeah. when we're saying, hey, this really has been working, that's what we're saying has been working. Right. It's been putting on muscle. Right. Now, I feel like shit far more portions of the day than I ever have. So for uh, me- Super hungry. Like, what's it feel like for you? I feel like I'm eating everything in the house. I can't eating, but I'm still losing weight. I cannot stop eating. But I did add the sauna because I got a three-week free trial somewhere and they got a sauna. So I've been taking advantage of that. I'm doing two 15-minute sessions five days a week. Mm -hmm. And that's probably part of my hunger issue. But I cannot stop eating and I'm still losing weight. It almost feels a little bit like when you're on steroids. The, but I've never been on steroids. Not steroids like the anabolic kind. I mean like when you're oh, sick medical, and the doctor medicine. gives you steroids gotcha. to help get over something. You know how you just eat everything in the yeah. house? That's kind of how I've been feeling. Like it's I've, insane. Yeah. But I'm still losing weight. And I still look more trim. And so I've been trying to pay attention to those cravings and try to give my body the fuel that I think it's asking mm -hmm. for, right? So yeah, getting full full protein and yeah, more carbs than I normally eat. Right. Full disclosure, I added oatmeal for the first time in eight to 10 years. It's in the maybe category for me mm -hmm. when I recommend it because of the lectin protein. You can see all kinds of episodes on that. So far, it doesn't seem to be affecting me in a negative way. Like yeah. I look for hot spots and itching and that kind of stuff. And I think if, if the Mike Menser workout had a perfect plate portion size, it would be 50% carbs from Pro what I saw. Probably. Carbs are extremely anabolic for muscle growth. And which is weird because normally you think carbs, I think back to my cross country days and carbo loading before a workout. Right. But my body seems to be craving them during this four day rest. Right. Which yeah, is it's insane. Like my appetite has doubled. I, I have to pull over and like buy a protein drink somewhere. It's insane. But anyhow, so. Yeah, I've been doing a lot more like, you know, whole grain rice kind yeah. of stuff. Yep. Yeah. And it's weird. I've never once in my life craved oatmeal. But I'm like, God damn it. I need some oatmeal. Yeah. <laughs> and I think there's something to that, the cravings to like listening to your body and 
eating what your body's... T- I think there's something connection that we don't quite understand yet that's probably smart to listen to. I mean, unless your body's like, I need that sweet, sweet crack okay. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably yeah. ignore that voice from your yeah. body. Yeah. So we'll continue this this protocol and we'll report our findings after this new split. Yeah, but, we're going to try to do like the four weeks of four, I think is what our plan yeah, is. Yeah. See where um, we're at. And then what, he's, what he says in the video is, or in, in his teachings... Is this, this, to, this is the part that really you should have seen Brandon. He's like, no, he didn't, he didn't, want, to, didn't want to even process this point. Mike Mentor <laughs> uh, But so once you've done that, because you should be adding more weight as you grow stronger, you need to increase the amount of days of no workout. So five days in between workouts, six days in between workouts, and eventually seven days in between workouts, because you're doing more and more damage, greater intensity as you're able to increase your weight to do more damage, which makes sense. And I can see without question, this is working more than anything I've ever tried. And I've tried at least 30 to 40 different protocols at this German volume train, like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I think it's fun to talk about, like, there is, I, we we're talking about it on the phone. This is why so many people, and like if you Google Mike Menser, there's so many people that hate Mike Menser. Yeah, because he's destroying the supplement industry. If you're only taking pre-workout once a week and you were taking it six days a week, they're fucking pissed. You're not making money. And if you're a gym person that wants people in there six hours a day. And taking advantage of personal training and the smoothie bar and all this other stuff. Yep. Yep. It's uh it's real countercultural in that yeah. in that nineteen eighties gold gym, golden era of bodybuilding. Yeah. You know. But I will say not a beginner program. Definitely not right for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um warm up. I saw one video, Brandon. I don't even know if I told you this. I think I did. He was talking about pre-workout and he was saying how important it was to do 10 minutes of stretching. And you got this giant muscular looking Arnold Schwarzenegger body type, shorter, but still like the same kind of muscle on frame guy doing stretches with the lady in the, like, she looks like she's like the 1980s jazzercise, jazzercise yeah. outfit. And he's doing full splits, leaned over. <laughs> like this guy's super flexible. <laughs> and he's like, I always do 10 minutes of this before the Mike Menser workout. So mm-hmm. it's not like. I think a lot of people hear like the Mike Windsor workout is just like, just go in there and kill one set. Yeah. Well, that'd be really dumb. Yeah. If you don't stretch, if you don't warm up. If you don't follow the protocol, if you don't understand proper form, if you're not in tune with your body, activating the proper muscles, not mm-hmm. compensating. So there's a lot that should be right. in place. And the other thing that we were surprised to find out, I just want to kind of mention everything, is that he said like you're loading up the weight and you, you say, you're, you're, say you're going for five and you get to three and you're out of juice. Don't reload and try to get five. Yeah. You'll get it next time. Yeah. Which is weird when your next time is four days away. Yep. Or in this case. 16 days. 16 days Six, away. Two, almost half, a, it's a half a month away. Right. Plus a day. He's like, you'll get it next time. Yeah. Two it's days, just, two. it's all very countercultural, I guess. Yeah. So I'm having a blast. I freaking love it. Um, I'm, I'm excited to keep exploring this. I've only done two of the four workouts yeah. of the new split, but so we'll see what happens. Yeah. And right now, I think you and I mentioned a couple of times to each other, maybe this, it probably isn't the way to work out forever, but maybe this is a great thing to add once a year, you know, we'll yeah, find I'm, out. I'm committed to doing that. I miss working out every, I love to work out. It's fun. I enjoy it. Uh, but that's not everybody. So if you want the muscle, but you don't like spending the time in the gym, if you've got the proper base mm-hmm. and you build up to it, perhaps this is a way forward for you. And you know, we haven't talked about cardio. What is, what does the menser feel about the cardio? Joe, I don't know. I, I saw this in a video. He said, if you must do cardio, and he was talking about people that are addicted to the gym and love it. Yeah. 30 minutes once in your rest day, in your rest period, that four day off. Yeah. If you wow. must. I have to say, I haven't done cardio aside from circuit training in probably nine or 10 years and been able to maintain my 84 pound weight loss for 10 years now. So I don't think cardio is necessary, at least for weight loss, but there are benefits to it and cardiovascular benefits. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but it's certainly not necessary for it's weight loss or for maintaining. I did see one video where it was like he highlighted the benefits of long walks barefooted for grounding. Yeah, which is great. We've done episodes on that with Dr. Clint, or Clint O'Bear's mm-hmm. research and what he was able to discover with grounding. So I could get behind that. And one more thing I did see in the videos, he was like, so what do you do when you're bored? Yeah. And the Mike Mentor approach was learn philosophy. Really? Yeah, that's what he said. That. Read philosophy books. That's interesting. I don't know that I would do that if I was bored. Usually I do something like <laughs> mind numbing and that makes me dumber. Ab workouts. Ab workouts. <laughs> that's right. If you must. 
Yep. Do ab workouts. Do ab workouts. But yeah. I think it's that radical approach to rest. Like, don't screw up your potential. I mean, gains is the right word? Sure. We'll go with that. The, the maximizing the output. Yeah, exactly. Getting the most out of what you're doing. Right. So, so it's a weird regiment. Yeah. It's it, definitely different than anything we've tried. Yeah, if you hate exercise and you hate spending time in the gym, this or if you be, just have very limited time. This could super be your jam. This could super be your jam. But there has to be proper base. Because it's all about that base, as Megan Trainor. Yes, no trouble. I hope I never make another Megan Trainor reference for the rest <laughs> of my life. But anyway, those of you that like Megan Trainor, I'm sure she's a fine artist. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, cool. So It's we, a personal trainer decision, really. It's a personal <laughs> What you did there. <laughs> Very funny. We're both dads, so dad jokes are coming. So yeah, we'll keep reporting on this. We'll do another episode and as soon as we finish yeah, these. Uh... Do some research. I would just say yeah. Heavy Duty Training is Mike Mentzer's official YouTube channel. Of course, he's passed away, but they're still posting new yeah. stuff, which is... It, it is worth mentioning he died, what, in his 50s? Yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, which maybe. is common in that era of bodybuilders. With steroid use and everything else. But I also heard that he... It was genetic. It was a, it was a common thing in his family to have. Yeah that going on yeah. so he had that stacked against him and when you add steroids on top of that you're just poking the bear yeah yeah that makes sense so uh, yeah it's poking fun. the bear is also what people who take steroids call it the act of are you kidding steroids. no <laughs> <laughs> just, i am Fuck kidding Joe. and goebbels written on the ceiling oh really <laughs> um, gotta poke the bear yeah <laughs> yeah i mean hook, hook line and sinker so yeah we'll keep reporting it's good stuff research it probably don't try it if you've never trained before i wouldn't start there but we'll keep on reporting on this thanks for tuning in today i hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode if you did go check us out at firewithinnf.com and sign up for refuel a weekly email with recipes videos and tips to stoke the fire within also you can join the fire within community by being added to our facebook group and don't forget to follow us on social media.